Chapter 6 Dylan I am at the door the next morning when Kirsten arrives. She flashes me a timid, skeptical smile as she opens the door. I know I'm not Molly, but I've worked a lot of customer service jobs. I promise it will be okay until she gets back. Kirsten says nothing as she walks behind the counter and reaches down for something. Oh, I know it will be. She crosses back to me and holds out a folded piece of green fabric. I take it and let the fabric fall down. My heart sinks as I realize it's an apron. Company policy, she says, with a slight shrug of her shoulders as I stare at the apron. The twinkle in her eyes tells me she is enjoying this, and I begin to wonder if maybe Molly won't owe me after this is all over. Even though every masculine fiber in my body shudders at the thought of donning the apron, I slip it over my head. A promise is a promise, and I will be a good sport about this. Thankfully, the apron is simple. There are no frills or ruffles. I might have had to draw the line there. Okay, let's give you a brief rundown of everything, Kirsten says, taking charge. Though she has relaxed considerably in the time I've known her, all of a sudden I see the woman from the first day reemerge. I will do the specialty coffees, but you can make regular coffee, right? I mean, put the grounds in the filter and push the button? Yes, he can push button, I respond in a caveman-type voice. A smile breaks across her face. Sorry, I'm just a little nervous about this. It's my baby, you know? I get it. Look, I can make the regular coffee and wash the dishes and take money. I've got you covered. She lets out a long breath. I hope so. Okay, I'll skip the basics then and just tell you where everything is. That way you can give it to me if I need it. Sound good? Sounds perfect, I say with a nod and try to keep up as she runs through all the ingredients and where everything is stored. It doesn't appear too hard. Milk and cream in the fridge, syrups and sugars on the back counter, coffee by the machine. Though I still have no idea what to expect, I think I will be fine. Kirsten shakes her head as she glances at her watch. Out of time, here we go. Don't worry, your customers will understand even if we aren't perfect. Thanks. This time, her smile is genuine, and after another deep breath, she opens the door and the stream of customers enter. I don't know if it's because word got out about Molly being sick or if business is finally picking up for them, but as I look out at the room, it appears there are more people here today than normal. I try not to let that concern me as the first customer approaches the counter and orders a drip coffee with room for cream. Drip coffee. That I can do. Molly. My stomach finally begins to settle about three in the afternoon. It has been a long 24 hours. I managed to keep my stomach in check during the appointment last night and the ride home with Dylan. But as soon as I tried to drink some fluids, it began churning again. After two or three more offerings to the porcelain god and a thorough toothbrushing after each deposit, I was finally able to crawl into bed. Sleep was fitful at best, but I did manage to rest a little. Around noon, I decided to attempt fluids once again, and though my stomach twisted, it kept the contents in. Unfortunately, sleep didn't return, so I turned on the TV. Not a big television fan, my attention wandered from one show to the next. I have no idea how people stay home and watch it all day. To me, that sounds about as boring as watching paint dry. When the doorbell rings, I push myself up from the couch and shuffle to the front door. Surprise floods me at the sight of Dylan. Oh no, did it go awfully? Actually, it went really well. Tristan decided to help out as well and take the afternoon shift so I could come check on you. He holds up a bag. I brought chicken soup and Sprite and crackers. He shrugs and offers a sheepish smile. I wasn't sure what you might be able to eat, but I'll get you anything else you need. 
I smile at his kindness before I realize I haven't showered or brushed my hair. I haven't brushed my teeth since this morning, but at least they have been brushed. My hand flies to my head and tucks a strand behind my ears. Don't worry, you look great. I should still be angry at him. He left me without a word. But I can see that he is trying so hard to be different, to show me he has changed, to take care of me, and so I step back and let him enter my sanctuary. I look like crap, but thank you. You might feel like crap, but you don't look like it. His eyes tear through me as he sets the bags down. They rip my carefully constructed wall to shreds, and when he steps toward me, I don't move. Molly, I... I don't care what he has to say. I can read his emotions in his eyes, and I want the comfort he's offering. Hoping my stomach will behave, I lean up and wrap my arms around his neck. His eyes register surprise for just a moment, before his arms find the small of my back and then our lips are touching. Remembering the past, exploring the difference, bridging the years. This may be the stupidest thing I've ever done, but at this moment, I don't care. I simply allow myself to enjoy the feel of being in his arms once again. Does that mean you've forgiven me? He asks with an impish smile when we part. It means I'm willing to give you another chance, I say. Now, less talking and more catching up, please. Absolutely. I'm always happy to oblige.